So there is another interesting uh, problem where you can also use Markov chains to address the uh, to answer the questions related questions. So this this has something to do with reliability. Uh, it has something to do with the so-called edge replacement policies in reliability. So you may, for example, a municipality is in charge of replacing all the bulbs along the streets, right? So they are all there, and then uh, it is undesirable to have the streets actually go dark just because actually lamps were there waiting for replacement. And sometimes it is more beneficial, both cost-wise and was the convenience for the citizens, to replace the bulbs, for example, even though they, they are up and running over there, if they are old enough, you still replace them, right? So that's called like age replacement. So anything that is still, anything uh, 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 that, that is in place uh, is going to be replaced either when it fails or at the, either at the time when it fails or uh, when it, its age reaches a pre-specified uh, 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 number, right? Whichever occurs first, right? And here is there is there is a description, a nice exercise, an example in your textbook, textbook where th this example is being covered in some detail. I just wanted to discuss it in class as well, right? So they also talk about changing light bulbs in the example. So we consider a light bulb whose lifetime measured in discrete time, and we uh, are going to denote it by a random variable y, right? So y is used to denote the lifetime of a typical light bulb, right? Okay. We assume that this random variable has discrete distribution, which is not a bad assumption because people usually just check whether a bulb is working or not at, uh, at the beginning of certain periods. They check whether they work periodically, so they actually count whether count the days or the hours before something fails, right? And uh, will denote the probability that y equals, let's say, k, namely a bulb uh, fails exactly after k unit of time, right, by a k, right, which is positive for each k running from 1 to something, well, that's not necessary, I guess, but in this example we'll make the assumption for any positive integer. And since this is supposed to be a probability distribution, of course, we have to make sure that the sum equals 1. Right? And here is how the replacement uh, is being done. Each bulb is replaced by a new one when it burns out. Right? And suppose the first bulb lasts until y1. Right? The first bulb is going to have a lifetime of length y1, right? So this thing will last until time y1. And as soon as uh, it fails, right, it is being replaced uh, with a new bulb and the second bulb will then last until y1 plus y2. Right? The y2 is the lifetime of the second bulb, right? For this entire period, we will still have light, right? And it goes like this. So as soon as the second bulb fails, you then replace it with the third bulb, and the third bulb will last until y1 plus y2 plus y3. Uh, and uh, for the nth one, you know that it is going to actually, the total service that is provided by the first n bulb is going to be y1 plus and so on until yn, right? And then we can define by xn, okay, the h of the light bulb uh, that is in service at time 
n, okay? So this is the h of the light bulb, which is in service at time n, right? Okay, we have n ranging from 0 to arbitrarily large numbers, right? You can then look at the sample path of this process, right? So you have time n on the horizontal axis, and then you have the h of the bulb, which is in service at any given time, right? So we have time 1, 2, 3, 4, it goes like this, all right? So the h can be as low as 0, but maybe 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, right? Right? Initially, let us assume that we actually placed a brand new light bulb, right? If Right. It is going to survive for several periods before it fails. Let's say the light, the first light bulb, right, Y1, has a lifetime Y1, which happens to be in this particular example 3, right? So as soon as it fails, we replace it with a new one. So at time 3, we start with a new bulb. Therefore, its H, the beginning of period 3, is going to be 0, right? 0H means it is brand new. If it has, let's say, uh, its lifetime equals 2, right, it is going to fail 2 periods later. So if you look at the H of bulb in service at period 4, it's, you will read what? 1. So you have right now a bulb running of H1, right? You read it from here, right? When time 5 comes, if as I just assumed, right, so this is 3, the lifetime of the second bulb is 2. At time 5, since the second bulb has just failed, right, we, we replace it with a brand new one. Now the age of the bulb which is in service at time 5 equals 0, because now we have a brand new bulb. And it, this will just go like this. A picture of this kind, right? But this function is what? Random. Because this is true only for one particular omega. Right? If you change to another omega, a sample, a point, sample point in your sample space, you're likely to get something else. Right? Okay. And then, we, uh, we uh, okay, what did I say? I haven't specified actually how Y1, Y2 are related to each other. We know that Y, right, the typical uh, lifetime of a typical light bulb has a known distribution and so we will assume if you also assume in fact the uh, lifetimes of all these bulbs are independent of each other right right then the process X, this H process, is a Markov chain on what state space? So H can be 0, 1, 2, or anything in principle as large as you want. Right? And This is in particularly true because at any given time, right, all you need to know from the past is the age of the current bulb, right, the, the age of the bulb which is currently in service. Because you, if you know that since uh, lifetimes of the bulbs in the past and the, in the future are all independent of each other, knowing anything about the length of the ages of the failed bulbs in the past will not provide you any information about the age of the bulbs in the future, right? You, you need to remember the age of the bulb in, uh, in service because if it doesn't fail, right, that immediately suggests what uh, the likelihood of uh, uh, that it is going to be around for another, for one more period 
uh, into the future. Right? So we can then actually derive also the uh, once the transition probabilities, we can first look at the state transition diagram and on this then we can identify the, those once the transition probabilities, right? Once the state transition diagram for this problem becomes like what? So states are like the, you have zero, you have one, two and so on and so forth, right? And then you may have, let me put maybe i minus one and i, right? And it goes like this, right? So if you're if you currently have a bulb which is uh, brand new, right, then its age is going to be zero. If it survives, tomorrow you will have a bulb in place which is of age one. If it again survives, the next day you will have a bulb of age two. It goes like this. So this is possible. But now currently you may have a brand new bulb, but if its lifetime is only for one period, that means at the beginning of next period you will find it failed and you immediately replace it and you come back. So that can happen, right? And what are those probabilities? For this one, right, you have a, a brand new, brand new uh, bulb, right? So it is going to survive one period, so this is going to be I guess what a1 plus a2 and so on and so forth divided by right well a0 doesn't exist in this case we assume that it is at least for one period it works for, it is for one period right uh, okay let me just write it carefully maybe we can just write it here then actually we see whether that works for all cases that's perhaps easier okay so okay don't forget to add this, and then we will have all these case uh, possible trans uh, transitions as well, right? So this is too long. Let me just cut it here, right? Something will enter here, and and it and as it can happen actually any time, right? If you have a bulb of uh, HI, if it fails, then next period you will start with a brand new. Uh, but so we have a structure, a, a, a transition diagram of this kind. So what are the one-step transition probabilities? Okay, okay. Let us look at here. Currently, you have, right? Currently, you have a bulb of H i minus one, right? Tomorrow, if the probability that in one step chain goes from i minus one to i, is the same as saying that the chain or the currently operating bulb which is of h i minus i minus one or which has already survived for at least i minus one periods will survive for at least i uh, periods right so we use y to denote right the lifetime of a typical bulb right so in this state we already know right the lifetime of the bulb is greater than i minus 1 it doesn't equal to it does it is not equal to i minus 1 because otherwise we should have actually moved and replaced it right away with a brand new one right if it is there we know that even after i minus 1 periods it is still working so it is working for at least strictly more than uh, i minus 1 periods right and the probability that this is not going to fail is given by the conditional probability that it is the lifetime of this bulb is going to be strictly greater than i given that we already know that it is it has been around for at least uh, for uh, at least i periods i i periods right is given by this okay so we can okay definitely this depends only on this uh, state so you can denote it by q i minus one if you wish where now we define this number as the condition of probability that the lifetime of the bulb is going to be strictly more than i given that it was strictly more than i minus one right 
So that goes with this transition, uh, and this one obviously, if it doesn't survive for it, it's one more period, it must have uh, failed, namely the bulb must have failed, right? So this is the probability, right? The one minus this, so let us denote it by pi minus one, which is one minus qi uh, minus one, and that is given by what? This is one minus this probability, right? In this case, it is going to be y equals i, right? Given that y is greater than i minus one, right? Currently, the bulb is of h i minus one, and in the next period, you will have a brand new uh, bulb in place if uh, by the end of the i period the lamp just expires right so since we observe or the measure the lifetime of a bulb in discrete units there is nothing in between i minus when i i minus when and, and i right so we just calculate to find the conditional probability that the lamp will have uh, failed, right, by the beginning of period I, given that it was working, right, uh, at the end of period I minus one, right, and then you can calculate these probabilities. This is, okay, this is like the probability what if you use the con definition of conditional probability y equals i if y equals i then you know that it is of course greater than i minus one and then you divide by this right and this is given by a i right that's how we specify or the notation we use to denote the probability mass function and this is given by what this is ai plus ai plus one and so on and so forth right and of course this is we can either directly apply the definition and then calculate or again take subtract this from one and if you do that then you get what in the numerator you have i a of ai minus i plus one a sub i plus two and so on divided by a i plus a i plus one and so on. Okay. These things should apply to well this is for okay. I minus one for one two and so on and so forth. Right? Okay. If you put one for I that gives you, you will get the one in the uh, denominator, right? So, of course, then this is A1, as I suspected it was, and it is, this is one minus A1. Right? A1, no, just the other way around, I guess. Because A1 is the product of four PDF. So with the product of A1, it is going to come back. With this one, it will just go on. Right. Okay. Any questions about that? And in this case, we don't really apply any age replacement policy. So we just let the bulbs, right, work on their own and we replace as soon as they really fail, right? If you apply an age replacement policy, which says, okay, age replacement policy uh, so you replace okay a bulb either when it fails or if its h reaches let's say n h replacement policy with let's say parameter n right okay 
And in this case, if you want to know how the process X, right, the H process evolves, it is the same except that you truncate the state space and then, right? So it is like you have states 0, 1, 2, then you have n minus 2, and finally n minus 1. State n doesn't exist because as soon as lamp gets to hn, it immediately is being replaced by a brand new one, right? So from n minus 1, you, uh, the chain just moves to state 0 with probability 1, and the rest, the remaining transitions are uh, similar to the ones that we discussed earlier, like this, right? With the same probabilities. So for any one of this, for the i one, we have exactly those qi's, pi. So this is q1, right? And this is, uh, I should say, p0, q0, and this is q1, p1, this is q2, p2, and this is qn minus 2, and this is pn minus 2, where qi and pi are defined like this. In this case, qi minus 1, pi minus 1, we can just replace i's with i plus 1 to get the right uh, functions, right? And I guess we will just come across this model when we start discussing long run behavior of Markov chains. When you just put a replacement policy like this uh, uh, in operation, right, then in the long run you may wonder what fraction of lamps, for example, bulbs are being replaced even though they are still in working condition? That's not a very desirable thing, right? Something that is still in good condition, you, you, you replace it in order to give, in order to avoid that there are extended periods of darkness in the streets, right? So, of course, if you just choose and small, right? So there will, you will always have light on the streets. Right? So most of the time you will be replacing or you are replacing most of the lamps while they are still working. But therefore there, then, then there is also a huge cost associated with it. Right? In, in order to reduce the cost you can increase N, but then that's an inconvenience to the citizens right? because then there may be lamp that is not operating for a long extended time and we don't li like to have such things either. So you can then ask the questions like, okay, for any given n, right, what is the fraction of the time the streets are going to be in dark, right? So then, if you can quantify the long-run behavior, the fraction of time a Markov chain, a Markov chain stays in a given state, right? If you can quantify those things, for example, for this problem, when does the light unavail when is the light not gonna be available? Well in this case we don't have such a question I guess, do we? Because we are always replacing as soon as something fails. But we are we can ask the okay, so we know that we will always have light on the street, is it? If something fails, it is immediately being replaced, that's fine. So municipality is working hard, right? In order to keep the, the streets always uh, enlightened, right? But then we can ask to ourselves uh, what is the amount of lamps that we replace while they are still in working condition, right? So we can look at the cost figure associated with this good policy. Yeah, okay. Uh, that's true. That's also another issue that you, you can take into account, right? So if you have to replace something when it fails, while it, when it fails while it is operating, then it's going to be a lot costier than when you just, for example, replace something uh, when everybody is at home, for example. Then it's after... after Replacing something after off hours is 
cheaper than actually replacing them when everybody is around, right? Or, right. Uh, but still, I guess the other question is still also relevant. So if you are replacing, when you replace something that actually failed, it doesn't really cost, other than just the replacement cost. But when you replace something that is actually still operating, so you are actually throwing it away, even though you know that it still has some economical life left in it, right? So the fraction of bulbs that are still working, but you replaced just because their age reached to this limit. How do you find that? If you can associate, let's say you already know how to find the fraction of time the Markov chain spends in each of these states, right? So the f uh, fraction, right, of the time the chain is going to spend here, that's denoted by zero, gives you actually the fraction of the bulbs that you will, uh, no, that's the fraction of the time you replay, you make a replacement, whether it is because actually a bulb has uh, failed or because its age reached to n, right? Because this is what? Uh, the fraction of time when you have a brand new bulb. Every time you visit this state, you must have actually replaced something. So there, there is a one-to-one -one correspondence, right? But there are two ways to come here. Either something has failed, or because actually a bulb turned out to be a very good one, and it aged, its age actually go beyond what you expected, right? And every replacement you make when you are in this state is actually an extra cost to you, right? If n is too small, that number is going to grow. Because if it is and it's too large, it is going to uh, 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 it is likely to be less because you are visiting this state uh, less often, right? So then, if you want to find the fraction of time when you replace a bulb because its age goes beyond your expectation, is going to be given by what? Uh, okay, every time you visit this state, which is this. Right, and you can just look at actually the difference to see whether actually you are excessively, right? The, the difference between pi zero and pi n minus one basically gives you what? You can compare this with pi n minus one, right? And this is actually the fraction of time when you make a replacement because a, a, a bulb has. Uh, uh, the life, economic lifetime of a bulb has expired, and here actually you are replacing a good bulb, right? If this is, these are comparable, then that means you are not actually uh, uh, using an efficient uh, replacement policy. What you would have expected, and you would want to have is something like this is maybe significantly larger than the other one, right? But we maybe somebody will also actually provide the cost figures for each one of these, right? The replacing something when it fails and replacing a bulb when it is still in working condition. Now you can calculate the overall cost and then you play with N to find uh, the optimal H, uh, H when you are supposed to replace uh, the bulbs. We'll see that example again. So after I explained to you how you can really quantify the so-called long-run fraction of time a Markov chain spent in each of these states, right? So what is that anyway? So let us, let's start looking at that, or, well, maybe I should, should I start? No, no, I have still 10 minutes. 10 minutes, okay. I, I will have to break this into piece, but I can give at least, uh, a general idea of what we should expect next week, right? So we classify first of all Markov chains, right? Long run behavior does not make sense for all kinds of Markov chains, especially if a Markov chain has uh, transient states, meaning that after a while it leaves all the states without ever coming back. So there is, it is not like in an equilibrium. It is not if a chain doesn't actually visit a state infinitely often, then you cannot talk about long run time spent in that state. It basically means that the long run time it spends equals zero, right? Because 
it doesn't really come uh, often enough to really quantify or just uh, uh, testify that the chain actually spent some positive time over there, right? So therefore, we first classify them. Okay, there are chains for which it makes sense to talk about long-run behavior, and there are Markov chains for which really this concept doesn't exist or t has trivial answers. For some of them, it doesn't exist. For some of them, it's trivial. Uh, the question has trivial answer. Okay, so. For a Markov, it, well, as usual, I'm going to just denote the Markov chain by x. All right? And we'll assume for some time that it has a finite state space. OK, so we just conveniently enumerate them with integers from 0 to n. And we will suppose that Okay. There is a K for which, okay, positive, such that when you raise to K power of its one step transition matrix and look at the IJ entry, okay, I guess it is time to change this, it's positive for every pair I and J. Okay. The meaning of this is, right? You can all, when you look at the state diagram, a state transition diagram between any pair of states i and j, you can find a path of length k. So, in other words, it is always possible to reach state j from state i within, uh, for some finite k number of uh, steps, right? So that shows that actually states are connected to each other somehow. Even if you let, if, even if you wait quite long, it really doesn't matter. So we don't really care how large k is, as long as you can reach any state from any other state. That means that actually chain somehow uh, is connected to each other. Right? Then there is some reason for us to believe that actually you can uh, come back and visit, let's say, a stage infinite low fun. because if you are somewhere else. Right? In the state spaces, there is some path between the states. Now, eventually, you may actually come back and visit state J as well. Then maybe it makes sense to quantify actually time spent or the fraction of time spent in any given state J. Right? So we'll make first this convenient assumption. In many applications we will be studying, actually, these are going to be satisfied. Right? In others where long-run behavior really doesn't, or the, for, for the transient models, I mean, or sh I should say like uh, uh, in many policy problems like this one, right? you are trying to find the best replacement policy. So you, you will want something that is going to work over extended periods of time. So you will be facing actually a system that works on its own over and over again. It is not going to blow up. If it blows up, then the states means um, are all transient. And then actually there is a bit more fundamental problem with your design in the first place. So you first come up with a working replacement policy that will most likely suggest that you have a system in equilibrium. And on average, it, on average, in a year, for example, you are not gonna, you don't expect to have more than 10,000 bulbs to be replaced. If that number can grow in probability, it's arbitrarily large. Then it means you don't even you have not even designed a good system. So in many cases, the uh, assumptions that we make are just a very natural. Uh, uh, they tend to be natural properties of the systems that human beings will actually come across in uh, when they really design a good system. All right. And so this is one thing. So the, we will assume that. Okay, a Marco, the Markov chain that we will be working uh, has a one-step transition property with this uh, property, and such one-step transition properties are called regular for obvious reasons. Now, I already explained that, that these are the ones that, that are, they are the good ones, good Markov chains, right? So therefore, we call them regular, and everybody else is irregular for us, right? So one-step transition, and then we call the one-step transition 
matrix P or even the Markov chain itself, namely Markov chain X itself, regular, okay, regular in this case, if this condition holds, okay, in this case, okay, and indeed if a Markov chain X is regular, namely if this holds, this condition, then we say that it has a limiting probability distribution. And we will denote it when there is no other uh, compete, competing need for pi, denote by pi, which is going to be a function defined, right? Also, a, a actually, measure defined on the state space E, right? So remember, we have finite number of states labeled by 0 through n, right? The probability solution. Uh, pi such that what is this anyway so it is a distribution in the sense that okay first of all all of them are strictly positive for each state right and since it is a probability distribution they sum to one okay and so, this to explain basically why we call it probability distribution. It is called limiting, right? Since, okay, let me, right? For each j, pi j gives the limit as n goes to infinity the probability that at time n the chain is in state j starting any in initial state, right? For, I guess you are not the only one who is running out. Let's see. We are getting closer to the end of the lecture. For every i and j in the state space E, right? And what is what is uh, the interpretation of this thing? So in the long run. When you let the Markov chain run for a long period of time, the chain is likely to be in state J with this probability, irrespective of what the initial state was. So two consequences. First of all, we can talk about, uh, the, uh, we can characterize or quantify the likelihood that the chain is going to be in a particular state far in the future. And we also notice that it is independent of the initial state, and that's actually a result of the Markov property. Right? We said that the Markov property has this forgetfulness property. When you give the present, future is independent of the past. But if you look far into the future, it just forgets about from where it was coming. Right? So you get a distribution which is independent of the initial state, right? with this exact quantity, if the matrix is regular, right? Then we can we will see that this coincides with the so-called equilibrium distribution, which we have to define as well. And the equilibrium distribution also gives us uh, the chance to quantify the long-run function of time a Markov chain spans in each of these states in the way that you can imagine, or it makes sense to you when I say so. And then we will be able to answer questions like. Well, what is the fraction of bulbs or the times when we replace actually a bulb while it was still working? And then we can just quantify all the costs and even then control the costs. Right? So we'll discuss all these things next week. Right? All right. If you don't have any questions, do you have any questions? All right. I'll see you next week then.